everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 most dangerous shadow spawn from the Wheel of Time. Before getting into the meat of the video, let's go ahead and throw up a spoiler warning. The video is going to carry a spoiler rating of yellow, meaning it will not have any major plot spoilers, but we are going to get into some details about the various shadow spawn and where they appear in the story. So if you haven't read the series all the way to the end, and want nothing even close to being a spoiler, be careful watching this, but I'm really not going to spoil anything major. Also remember, I am currently running a contest for a free copy of the Wheel of Time Companion. You can get the details on the contest at the very end of this video, as well as another very special announcement, so make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end. So Shadow Spawn are constructs created by Aganor the Forsaken during the War of Power at the end of the Second Age. Aganor experimented on captured humans to create the most vicious creatures possible to serve the Dark One. Some of Aganor's creation were more powerful than others, so we're going to rank the top 10 most powerful Shadow Spawn from the Wheel of Time series. Some real quick rules for the list. We're only going to mention Shadow Spawn that we actually see or learn some information information about in the series. There are clearly other creatures in the Blight and other forms of Shadow Spawn, but we're going to avoid discussing those as we really don't have any information on them. So let's go ahead and get into our list. Coming in at number 10 on the list, the Zamara. Zamara are a construct that have the appearance of beautiful young men and women, but their eyes are dead and soulless, having no personality and no real consciousness. They are essentially just servants, having the ability to read minds to better please those that they serve. However, they only have short-term memory, not really being able to remember anything long-term. So they're not useful to carry information or to spy. Moradin is known to use them some, as he found some in a stasis box from the Age of Legends. Zamara did not have any real combat abilities and would essentially be very easy to kill. After all, they are just servants, and that's the reason why they get the number 10 spot on our list. Coming in at number 9 on the list, we have the Thakandar Forgers. The Forgers are man-shaped entities created to do one thing, and that's to make the deadly black blades for the Murdral. They're not really alive, and they're also not really blacksmiths. If they leave the area right around Sheogul, they'll turn to stone or dust and they'll just basically die. The Forgers use captured humans as a sacrifice to create those deadly black blades that the Murdral use. They first dip the created blade into the poisonous waters of a stream that runs through the valley there, and then they use that blade afterwards to kill a human sacrifice and thus creating the deadly black blades themselves. Though they are basically just dumb constructs created for one purpose and have no ability to leave the area around Sheogul, it is thought that they could be fierce fighters if forced to fight, and that's what gives them the number 9 spot on my list. Coming in at number 8. The main bulk of the Shadow's forces, the Trollocs. Trollocs were created by crossing human and animal stock and blending their physical characteristics. They are roughly 8 to 10 feet tall and are significantly stronger than humans. They see better than men in the dark and can track by scent and sound using some of their heightened senses. They have a very strong hunger and will pretty much eat anything including their own kind. They are sadistic and evil, but they're also really dumb and kind of cowardly. If they believe they are up against a force greater than themselves, they won't do it. Uh, they pretty much only attack forces that are weaker than them and less forced to. Trollocs breed like crazy and can sometimes create an offspring of another type of shadow spawn on our list, the Murdral, but more on that later. Trollocs are stronger than humans and very fierce fighters but also extremely undisciplined and quite stupid. Because of this, the only way to really use them in combat is to turn them loose in a frenzy, not really in controlled, precise combat. They can be linked to Murdral, making them far more effective in battle, as they're controlled by a far smarter entity, but once that Murdral is killed, the Trollocs will die as well. Trollocs have developed a social order and are divided into different bands that give them a societal structure. The female Trollocs are used for nothing but breeding, and the male Trollocs are basically the fighters. They are by far the most numerous of the Shadow Spawn, with there likely being close to 2 to 3 million Trollocs, with potential for much more than that. Because Trollocs are so undisciplined and stupid, they come in at the number 8 spot on our list despite their strength and fierce fighting ability. <laughs> At the number 7 spot, we have Grey Men. A Grey Man, also known as the Soulless, are creatures of the Shadow that are most often used as assassins. They are not constructs like most of the other Shadow spawn on our list, but rather they are men and women who have given their souls to the Dark One. 
After this has been done, they're basically invisible or unnoticeable to most people. They aren't really invisible, but they people tend to look right past them or not notice them right as they sneak up. Because of their ability to move in secrecy, they are able to kill targets often without being seen at all. They have no real special abilities other than their borderline invisibility and the special deadly weapons that they carry with them. Gray men are very deadly and because they are so difficult to detect, they place higher on the list than Trollocs, earning the number seven spot on my list. Coming in at number six, Drakkar. Drakkar are a type of shadow spawn resembling a normal man with pale skin, large eyes, and wings. When their wings are relaxed, they, it kind of looks like a Drakkar is just a man wearing a cloak. They are very skinny and tall and have sharp talons at the end of their fingers. Their hair is shoulder length and typically pulled back behind their head. They have misshapen mouths with blood red lips and have very pointed and sharp teeth. They have very distinctive screams and calls and they have the ability to hypnotize people with that call. They really have very little ability to actually fight but instead rely on that ability to lure in prey with their crooning voice putting the victim in a trance and then proceeding to kiss the prey, draining both their soul and life force. It is said that the kiss of a Drakkar is death. Essentially, Drakkar are like a cross between unintelligent vampires, the sirens from Greek mythology, and dementors from Harry Potter. Despite not having much fighting ability, they are incredible assassins, especially outdoors and at night, making them very dangerous and a deadly opponent and earning the number six spot on my list. Breaking into the top five, we have Murdral. Murdral, also known as the Eyeless, are tall men garbed in all black. They have very pale white skin and no eyes. When they look at someone with their eyeless gaze, the target feels intense fear. It is said by Borderlanders that the look of the eyeless is fear. In regards to their abilities, they are very strong, being stronger than the normal human. They are also extremely fast and agile, moving in snake-like motions. In addition to their ability to instill fear by just their gaze, they also possess the ability to step in and out of the shadows, disappearing and reappearing in the dark. Their blood is somewhat acidic and will etch steel if not cleaned off. They also possess the ability to detect channeling in a small way, feeling it like an itch when somebody channels nearby. They can be used to turn a channeler to the shadow, as a shadow channeler channels through the Murdral and to turn the target into another shadow channeler. So, Murdral are products of Trolloc mating, and about 5% of the Trolloc offspring become Murdral, about the same rate as channelers that are born to the human population, coincidentally. The Murdral themselves are infertile, but all of them that are born are actually just male. Murdral carry the blades created by the forgers we spoke of earlier, and these blades can kill a target after one nick with the blade, making them very, very deadly. Murdral are also extremely intelligent and cunning, and they can be linked to Trollocs to allow them to control the Trollocs and make them into a cohesive fighting force. There is a special Murdral in the books named Shaidar Haran, but we're not going to consider him on this list as he's kind of special and not really a normal form of shadow spawn. So we'll leave him off of this list. But because of their intelligence, physical abilities, crazy magic abilities, and deadly weapons, and the Murdral are an extremely deadly and huge part of the Shadow's forces. They earn the number five spot on my list. Coming in at number four, we have Dark Hounds. Dark Hounds are corrupted wolves and travel in packs of 10 to 50 and are extremely difficult, if not impossible, for most people to kill. They appear like large dogs or wolves, but are about the size of a small horse and weigh around 300 pounds each. Dark Hounds' blood and saliva are both poisonous and extremely corrosive. They leave no tracks other than walking over stone, and although some breeds of Dark Hound can be killed with conventional weapons, Many Dark Hounds cannot be killed short of the use of a power rot weapon or the use of Balefire. If damaged, they just regenerate. They will also never stop once they have the scent of their prey, and they have the ability to run without stopping, essentially unlimited endurance. They do have a fear of water and will typically not venture out in the rain or cross open water, but yet they can still chase down their prey. Dark Hounds edge out Murdral on the list basically because they're so difficult to kill, with the majority of the people in the world having almost no chance at all of killing them or stopping them. They are extremely deadly and take the number four spot on my list. 
So at number three, we have the worms of the blight. Worms are actually the larval stage of another type of shadow spawn called a Jumara, but more about that in a moment. They are essentially extremely large worms that roam around the blight. They will eat anything that they come across, including a Murdral. They can only be killed by chopping them up into small pieces, and as they will regenerate and just keep coming. But they move quickly throughout the blight, and almost all forms of shadow spawn and creatures in the blight are extremely scared of the large worms. Because of their immense size and the fact that most other shadow spawn are terrified of them, they are in the number three spot on my list. So with the number two most dangerous shadow spawn, we have the adult form of the worm, the Jumara. Jumara are immense insectoid creatures that are covered in spines and tentacles. They can grow to a gigantic size, growing easily over 100 feet long or more. Their mouths have tentacles and mandibles, and so they kind of look horrifying like giant insects. Even the Forsaken are scared of them and what they can do. The one power when channeled at them only makes them stronger and does not negatively affect them in any way, giving their very few ways to actually kill them once they're adult and for grow full grown. It is speculated that they were not created to actually serve the shadow, but just so Aganor could see how horrifying of a creature he could create. Because of their immense size and the almost impossibility of killing them, the Jumara earned the number two spot on the list. So what is the number one most dangerous shadow spawn on the Wheel of Time novels? The Golom were a set of six constructs made for the purpose of killing those who could channel and anyone else they would come across. Three male and three female Golom were created. Even most of the Forsaken didn't think they should have been created. Golom are completely immune to any form of channeling as the weaves just dissolve before hitting them. They can detect channelers similar to the way a Murdral does, so they can be drawn to channelers. They are also completely immune to conventional weapons, with the only weapon known to harm them being a form of a Tarangrial that also prevents channeling. They have superhuman strength, being able to rip a man's throat out one-handed with ease. They have no skeletal structure and can easily fit through small openings like a mouse hole or even a keyhole. They are almost impossibly fast, being faster than a Murdral and extremely agile and good with weapons. The Golem lives off of fresh blood, drinking the blood of victims to sustain itself. They can die of old age, but are essentially absolutely impossible to kill and designed to kill channelers. Because of the utter unstoppability of the Golem, they earn the number one spot on my list for the most powerful shadow spawn. So what do you think of my list? Do you agree with it? Let me know down in the comments below and make sure to both like the video and subscribe to my channel if you're liking my content. So I wanted to throw something out for all of you guys to know. The same day that this video is getting released, Daniel Green is releasing our first collaboration together as well. I joined him on his series, Watt Talk, and we had a blast talking about the books. Make sure to check out his channel as well if you haven't already and watch that video and watch all the rest of his stuff too. He's amazing. And so guys, I'm still running my contest for a free copy of the Wheel of Time Companion and it's super simple to get entered into the contest. Simply join my Discord server and leave a question in the contest questions section for my upcoming Q&A video. It's that simple. If you're new to Discord, it's basically a chat service that allows you all to interact with me in a very personal way and lets us discuss the novels, the upcoming TV show. Um, it's free and I'm really active there, so it's a great way for us to interact and you can give me ideas for new videos, etc. You can find out how to join my Discord server and then ultimately get into the contest by checking out my Patreon page. And there's a post there that will tell you about the contest and how to join the Discord. And while you're there, if you're enjoying my channel and my content, consider supporting my channel by joining my Patreon community and check out the cool tiers of rewards we've got going on over there. I think you guys will like it. But hey guys, thanks again for all the support and until next time, peace out homies. <laughs>